On May 16, 2011, Space Shuttle Endeavour launched the International Space Station for its final mission. Two, zero, and liftoff for the final launch of Endeavour. Expanding our knowledge, expanding our lives in space. Houston Endeavour, all program. Roger roll, Endeavour. In the payload bay of Endeavour was the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer 2 and the Express Logistics Carrier 3. The roll program underway as Endeavour begins a heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree, 136 by 36 statute mile orbit. It would complete the U.S. orbital segment of the International Space Station. Three engines now throttling down as Endeavour uh, passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere. Approaching one minute into the flight. Endeavour, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. Endeavour's three uh, main engines now back at uh, full throttle, all uh, three engines in good shape. Endeavour's already uh, traveling. 1,300 miles per hour at an altitude of 11 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, now 12 miles. At liftoff, uh, Endeavour fully fueled, uh, weighed four and a half million pounds. It's already lost half that weight in propellant now, burned that weight. Next event is burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Uh, that upcoming here shortly at the uh, two minute three second point, those boosters are burning 11,000 pounds of fuel per second. And standing by for separation of the solid rocket boosters. The onboard guidance system has done its job of settling out any dispersions introduced at burst booster separation. The uh, orbiter is now traveling 3,200 miles per hour, downrange 50 miles, altitude 37 miles. All systems in good shape. Three good uh, hydraulic systems, auxiliary power units, and fuel cells. The fuel cells providing electrical power to all of the systems. Uh, two engine tail. Endeavour can reach uh, a TAL site in the event of a single engine failure. However, all three are in good shape. Space Shuttle Endeavour sailing into fair winds on its final historic voyage. This view looking down the external fuel tank, uh, the orbiter there on the top, as uh, Endeavour continues to power its way into orbit, traveling 4,000 miles per hour downrange, 90 miles, altitude 50 miles. Three minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. Endeavour, Press D'Amico and single engine Zaragoza 104. Roger, Press D'Amico, single engine Zaragoza 104. Several calls there. Endeavour can reach a safe orbit on two engines now. The guidance system is controlling the engines to roll Endeavour to a heads up position to optimize the air to ground communications through the satellite network. After achieving orbit, the crew used the orbital boom sensor system to check Endeavour for damage sustained on launch.
After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Endeavour approached the station. At a range of 400 feet, Endeavour flipped over doing the rendezvous pitch maneuver to allow the station crew to photograph the protective tiles on the underbelly of the shuttle. After completing the RPM, the shuttle docked with the space station. View of the uh, orbiter docking system with the ring extended. That obviously is the first contact with the docking port on the International Space Station. The station's docking port, the pressurized mating adapter attached to the Harmony module of the International Space Station at the top of the view. You also see the European Space Agency uh, laboratory. Houston and station capture is confirmed. Once the hatches were open, the joint crew held a welcome ceremony and completed a safety briefing. The first task for the joint crew was to unberth the Express Logistics Carrier 3 and attach it to its final location on the P-3 truss. The next day, the AMS-2 was lifted out of Endeavour's payload bay using the Canadarm. It was handed off to the Canadarm-2 on the station and installed in its final location on the S-3 truss segment. Immediately after its installation, crews on the ground activated the experiment. The installation of AMS-2 marked the completion of the U.S. orbital segment of the International Space Station. The first spacewalk of STS-134 was completed on Flight Day 5. Drew Feistel and Greg Chamatoff completed the installation of a new set of MISSE experiments and also started installing a new wireless video system but were stopped when a CO2 sensor failed in Chamatov's suit. After the failure, the pair were told to install an ammonia jumper between P3 and P6 truss segments. The spacewalkers also installed a new light on the CETA cart on the S3 truss and a cover on the starboard solar alpha rotary joint. On flight day six, the members of Endeavour's crew performed a focus inspection of an area of thermal protection tiles on the bottom of the orbiter. The tiles were damaged during launch, and detailed data provided by the orbital boom sensor system was needed to make sure the orbiter could re-enter the Earth's atmosphere safely. The second EVA of STS-134 was conducted on flight day seven by Drew Feistel and Mike Fink. The spacewalk, the sixth longest in the history of spaceflight up until then, lasted eight hours and seven minutes, significantly longer than the planned six hours and 30 minutes. The excursion also marked the second longest spacewalk conducted from the ISS. During the spacewalk, Fink and Fustel hooked up a jumper to transfer 2.3 kilograms of ammonia to the P6 photovoltaic thermal control system. They also lubricated the solar alpha rotary joint in one of the hands on the Dexter. During the Sarge lubrication task, some of the bolts on one of the thermal blankets came free, and one of them was lost. While the EVA was being conducted, the rest of the STS-134 crew completed more transfers between the ISS and Endeavour. And Flight Day 7 also saw the ISS change of command ceremony. And Russian cosmonaut Dmitry Kondratev who had been the commander of Expedition 27 aboard the station, 
conducted a ceremonial change of command with cosmonaut Andrei Borisenko, the commander of Expedition 28. After the STS-134 crew went to bed on May 23rd, the Expedition 27 crew prepared for their departure. Expedition 27 commander Dmitry Kondratev and flight engineers Paolo Nespoli and Catherine Coleman left the ISS aboard Soyuz TMA-20. The departure of the three Expedition 27 crew members marked the start of Expedition 28, leaving the new Expedition commander, Andrei Borisenko, and flight engineers Alexander Samutikayev and Ron Garin aboard the station. Before re-entry, Soyuz TMA-20 performed a special flyabout of the ISS, taking numerous photographs of the station and of Endeavour. Soyuz TMA-20 and the Expedition 27 crew landed safely in central Kazakhstan at 2.27 Universal Coordinated Time on May 24, 2011. On Flight Day 10, the third spacewalk of STS-134 mission was conducted by Drew Feisel and Mike Fink. After the astronauts exited the Quest airlock, the pair began to install the Power Data Grapple fixture. The fixture itself and most of the components were installed, but the data cable associated with it was going to have to be installed later. The spacewalking pair then moved on and routed some new power cables from Unity to Zarya, providing a redundant power supply to the Russian segment. Feistel and Fink also moved up to finish the installation of the wireless video system which Fustel and Chamatov had begun on EVA-1. The pair also took pictures of the Zarya module thrusters and captured some infrared video with an experiment delivered on board the Express Logistics Carrier 3. On Flight Day 11, the crew of the Space Shuttle Endeavour conducted a late inspection of the orbiter's thermal protection system. On most previous flights, this inspection would be performed after the shuttle undocked from the ISS, but in this case it was done early because the orbital boom sensor system was to be left on board the ISS after Endeavour's departure. The final spacewalk of STS-134 and the final spacewalk of the Space Shuttle program was carried out on Flight Day 12. The EVA was conducted by Mike Fink and Greg Chemitoff, who began the EVA by installing the orbital boom sensor system on the S-1 truss segment. After the OBSS was installed, Fink and Chemitoff removed the end effector grapple fixture and replaced it with a spare power and data grapple fixture. The station's Canadarm2 could not grapple the EFGF, so the PDGF was installed on the end. After that task was completed, Fink and Chamatov moved to the Express Logistics Carrier 3 and released some torque on the bolts that were holding the spare arm of the Dexter down to that ELC. The EVA saw the total cumulative time spent performing EVAs in support of the ISS pass the 1,000 hour mark, and the three STS-134 spacewalkers spent a total time of 28 hours and 44 minutes outside the ISS on STS-134. On May 29, 2011, the Expedition 28 crew held a farewell ceremony for the STS-134 crew. After the two crews said their farewells, they got into procedures to close the hatches on the ISS and the shuttle. On Flight Day 15, Space Shuttle Endeavour undocked from the International Space Station after 11 days, 17 hours, and 41 minutes aboard. After the shuttle undocked, pilot Greg Johnson backed Endeavour out to a distance of about 200 meters, and once it was at that distance, he flew a complete lap around the ISS. After the lap was complete, an additional separation burn was completed, and after the burn was complete, Commander Mark Kelly took over the control and moved the shuttle to a point 6,100 meters behind and above the station, then to a point below the ISS. Kelly then guided Endeavour to a point 290 meters below the ISS, and this series of maneuvers was done to test a sensor test for Orion's 
relative navigation risk management sensors. The shuttle then made its final separation burn away from the station. After two more days in orbit, Endeavour achieved the correct attitude and fired its engines and headed for home. Endeavour landed on runway 15 at the Kennedy Space Center Shuttle Landing Facility in Florida and was officially retired at wheel stop. Gear down and locked. Main gear touchdown. Drag chute deployed by Greg Johnson. Forward gear touchdown. And so after a journey of six and a half million miles, Endeavour landing in darkness, but illuminated by the ingenuity, dedication of every astronaut, scientist, engineer, flight controller, mechanic and dreamer that helped it fly. The fleet's youngest ship completing its 120 two millionth mile after its crew delivered an instrument to the International Space Station will sift through the cosmic darkness for years to come. Houston, Endeavour, we'll stop. 122 million miles flown during 25 challenging space flights. Your landing ends a vibrant legacy for this amazing vehicle that will long be remembered. Welcome home, Endeavour. On June 7, 2011, Soyuz TMA-02M launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome for the International Space Station with the second part of the Expedition 28 crew. to the International Space Station. All systems go. At one minute and 10 seconds, the speed of the rocket should be approximately 1,100 miles an hour. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Soyuz TMA-02M docked with the Rosfiat module on June 9th. On June 20th, 2011, the ATV Johannes Kepler undocked from the ISS. While preparing to deorbit, the ATV was forced to conduct a debris avoidance maneuver, using some of its remaining fuel to move into a safe orbit after NASA warned of a potential collision with orbital debris. On June 21st, 2011, the ATV deorbited, burning up in the atmosphere as planned over the Pacific Ocean. The same day as the ATV deorbit, June 21, 2011, Progress M11M launched atop a Soyuz U carrier rocket from Baikonur Cosmodrome.
After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Progress M11M docked to the aft port of the Svezda module. The cargo of Progress M11M included 2,813 pounds of equipment, food, clothing, life support system gear, 2,050 pounds of propellant, 126 pounds of water, and 110 pounds of oxygen and air. The Expedition 28 crew was now ready for the final shuttle flight, STS-135.